Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. And the reason why I say good morning, Holy Spirit, because in my neck of the woods, it is good morning. But in your neck of the woods, it may be good morning, good evening, or good night. Hallelujah. Thank God that Sophie and I are back again with a word from the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's pray. Sophie and I give all the honor, the glory, and the praise to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is Israel. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am so grateful. Hallelujah. Today, oh God, oh God, oh God, I am thankful. I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful. Oh Lord, to be, today is another Sabbath day. Saturday is another Sabbath day. Tomorrow will be Sunday, the Lord day. Where the Lord raised up. Hallelujah. With all power in his hands. Hey, hey. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. What a wonderful Savior. The Lord. The Christ, if you will. The Anointed One. And all of His anointed. I thank God that I am anointed today because of Christ. I thank you, Lord God, for sending your Son the man, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And I thank you, Lord God, for looking over my family every day, every night, no matter where they are located, throughout this whole world. You are looking over them. And for the people that you have me to pray for in this world. Lord God, thank you and touch the orphans and the widows. And the ones that standing in the need and for provision. Thank you, Lord God. And thank you, Lord God, for touching the people in this world in the wars and rumors of wars and that your perfect will be done. Oh Lord God, I feel your presence today. What a sweet present. It's like fire Jeremiah said, shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord God, I feel your sweet aroma. I feel it. And sometimes it can smell like roses or flowers. Oh, Lord God, I thank you for the precious Holy Spirit. Sometimes I call them the precious Holy Ghost. My friend, the Holy Spirit. My partner, the Holy Spirit. The one that lives in the inside of the believer. He walks on the right side of you. The paraclete, the helper, if you will. The comforter. Yes, yes. 
And then when you get ready to do the will of the Father, he comes upon you. Do you know him? I'm talking about him. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. He's more than Mary, baby. Uh-huh. I'm talking about the creator. Do you know him? He came down. He, mm -hmm, he took off. He took off from heaven and came down to the earth. Came inside of flesh. Yeah. I say, do you know him? I ain't talking about do you know about him. I'm talking about it. It's a different knowing about somebody and knowing them. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the paraclete. Yeah, I'm talking about the paraclete. I know him. The spirit of God. The spirit of Christ. You know something? We learn of him daily. We're going to have to start talking like Christ and talking like God and being like our Father and stop talking like we been talking since we've been on this earth plane talking earthly and start talking heavenly because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God and if we want to start acting like our father we need to start acting like our father and our father is God Almighty not Satan Satan ain't our father no more once we became born again God Almighty became our Father. So we must shake off this earthly uh, uh, clothes and our mind and be renewed in our mind and command Satan in the way we think and how we feel and the things we do and the things we say and start acting like our heavenly father. No one told you how to act like your earthly father and your earthly mother when you came on this earth plane. Nobody, nobody. You just start acting like it. You need to start acting like your spiritual father. Yeah. And it's time to be about your Heavenly Father business. You know, Sophie and I, I'm going to throw this in there. Hallelujah. Have your way, Heavenly Father. Have your way. Sophie and I, you know, Sophie and I, yesterday, Friday, good Friday, Sophie and I, we normally do it on Saturday, but yesterday we went made some errands and stuff and we went to get the car wash and as we went it was some places to sit down and we were sitting down and this a guy came on the other side with his car and he asked us how much it costs and we were just talking and he said I'm going to ask the man can I get it done for $40 but he, he got it done oh he let him get it for 40 but I always got some more things done for them. There was some more money. We paid some more. They do great job. But anyway, as I began to talk to him, this was a spiritual assignment. That's why I say you, better, you need to be about your father business. I'm not just saying something for fun. You need to be about your father business. You be going to church and you be listening to ministry, that's fine. But you got an assignment. You ain't learning, you ain't listening to me. It's just the listening to me. You got an assignment. People coming to your house, they ain't coming to your house just to drink some liquor. They ain't coming to your house just to smoke some reefer. They ain't coming to your house just for no uh, chit chat. 
They come into your house for the word of God. For they can get born again. Filled with the spirit. So when they die. Because they don't know when they're going to get ready to leave this earth plane. God setting you up. To set them up. So they can go home correctly. I'm telling you something. Listen to the old man. So anyway, this man just talking to me. So you would think that was all to it, wouldn't you? So he part of this car and everything, lying, moving. We move our car and all this stuff. All of a sudden he gets out of his car, he moves his car up. Then he sits over there beside me. We talking. I said, well, that's a beautiful car. Come on up. I want to show you something. Start showing me all kind of stuff. So he's sitting over there on the other side. We talk. He talking about his wife and all of this. I didn't know I was going this route, but I'm going to tell you, because God want me to tell you. Maybe I don't help somebody today. Then all of a sudden, before he left, I told him about Africa and all of that, and how I got to Africa. He said, how did you get there? About my mother and all of that. So on the way we were getting ready to leave, he just getting rid of his car wash. Our car, car was finished. Sophie was paying the lady with the car. He said, why did you go? So I was telling him. Then all of a sudden he looked at me. He said, you know something? My wife and I, I had been drinking. But I haven't been drinking in two months. I've been praying. He was talking about him praying. And he don't want to uh, drink no more. Because him and his wife had been arguing, but they hadn't been arguing no more. Now, I wanted more time to talk to him. But God, the Holy Spirit, whispered in my, my ear and told me what to say to him before I left. But before I said that, he said this to me. When I told him how I got to Africa and what God told me and why I went, I had a short period of time to tell him. He said, you went to get your life even better. You know I went to Africa and stayed in Africa for 10 years and all the miracles and stuff happened there. I told him in a short period of time where it all happened. He said, you went there and your life and you got better and better and better and got your life better, didn't you? That's before he told me he had stopped drinking for two months. I told him, yeah. Then I say, I'm not funny or nothing. I say, I'm speaking over your life. Oh, Lord God. And then I touched him on his shoulder. And I say, when you have the urge to drink again, call on Jesus. I told him twice with a look that came over my face and the look that was in my eyes and I touched him again on the shoulder and I say do you hear what I'm saying I love you in the Lord I say and I say call on Jesus and he shall keep you delivered he say yes I hear you I hear you and that's what God was telling me to tell him. I'm telling you today. It's no more peanut butter and jelly that I be telling you through the scriptures. It's no more time to play around. It's no more time for none of that junk. It's no more time to be crying and whining. It's time to be about your father business. And it's time for you to help somebody. He wants you to help somebody. I'm going to tell you something. If you would stand up and speak the word only, he will say to you, remember I say healing is different than being whole. Your faith, not God, not Jesus, your faith has made you whole. If you can only believe, you shall receive. If you will speak the word and stand on it, don't let Satan and nobody.
nobody else if you can only believe. How you know? How you know, R.D.? Because I've been there. That's how I know. And I have seen it over and over and over. Seen the dead raised. I've seen people who are supposed to be dead. They still be living. More than one time. I know what I'm talking about. If you can only believe. And not only that, I say step it up. If you can trust him, I trust him. Do you? Well, stop talking and whining and start speaking the word only and step up and start helping others. Forget about yourself. You remember the woman? You remember Elijah? You remember Elijah? He went to that woman, her and her son. He said, bake me a little cake. She said, me and my son, I'm putting it in everyday language. Me and my son, get, I'm baking a cake because me and my son get ready to die. I'm putting it in everyday language. Over in the book of Kings. He said, bake me a cake first. That's just like them preachers, isn't it? I'm a preacher myself. Bake me a cake first. They say they always trying to take something from the people. That lady didn't have none and her son about to die. They always trying to take something from them, ain't they? Watch this. That lady baked that cake. And her and her and gave that man son. And her and her son lived. Did you hear what I said? The other one with the oil, the oil kept on flowing. What are you saying, man of God? I'm saying if you listen to me today, if you will only speak the word, I've been teaching over and over and over, if you will only speak the word only and stop saying anything out of your mouth, and speak the word on it. What's the word on it? The scriptures from the Bible and what I'm teaching you. The golden nuggets. And you start speaking them golden nuggets. I don't care what comes up, circumstances, what comes up, or uh, what kind of bill comes in the mailbox. The light bill, the water bill, uh, the, 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 the whatever bill. They're going to come. How you know, R.D.? Because I've been there. How you think I know? You think I'm telling you something I don't know? God done raised me up. I can't tell you something I don't know. I just don't say stuff all the time. I have been there. You think I ain't been there? You think I don't know what I'm talking about? You think I don't know what I'm talking about? I know what I'm talking about. I have been there. Moses bring water out the rock because he spoke to it. But he got upset one time instead of speaking to it, he hit the rock. That was Christ. He was being disobedient. Are you being disobedient instead of speaking the word only, you cry? Instead of speaking the word only, you talking about the situation. Instead of speaking the word only, you talking about what you see. Instead of speaking the word only, when that light bill comes, you talking about it. God is, bring the, God is ready to give you the world. And God will not let you go down. You his child. And no weapon. He didn't say the, that it will not form against you. He said it will not prosper. So don't you speak about it. 
trust him. And the day is your day. I dare you to trust him. No, don't say you trust him. I say, I dare you to trust him. If you trust him, if you trust him, I dare you to trust him. Because if you trust him today, I give you seven days. You didn't hear what I said. I said I give you seven days and the miracle will come. You, you, you're messing with me now. I said I give you seven days and the miracle will come. You didn't hear what I said. Lord Jehovah, Jara, do you hear? The man of God, R. D. Prophet, R. D. Stinson. I'm speaking. The one that you sent to R to Africa, Nairobi, Kenya. The one that you spoke to on 2516 Rachel Street. The one that you're talking to last night. The one that you done already did some miracles that I haven't been talking about. I ain't been telling nobody about because you told me to keep my mouth closed. Yeah. He been keep I've been keeping my mouth closed. So and I you just don't know. I say within seven days. I ain't talking about being wishy washy. I ain't talking about being wishy-washy. Believe today, don't believe tomorrow. Believe next week and don't believe. No! I say seven days. If you only believe. Whew. That's it. Lord God. Lord God. I give honor to my spiritual father Michael my spiritual father Bishop Apostle Michael Wagura Nairobi Kenya First Love Pentecostal Church in Nairobi Kenya shout about it somebody needs to praise the Lord and be about their father's business. And then Pastor Rose, we give a shout out to her. All the ministers, all the pastors, all the evangelists, all the deacons, all the missionaries, and whatever title you may hold in Nairobi, Kenya. And then Sophie and I, all to our family there in Nairobi, Kenya, we love you. May heaven smile upon you, and we speak in blessings to you today, today, today. And then, baby sister, bless you in the name of Yahshua Hamasiah, and keep up the good work. We love you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then, in Charlotte, North Carolina, we bless the family here. You know something? When it looks like you're losing, Satan trying to fool you. Because when you look like you're down, going down, that's when you're going over. Trust in God. And he will see you through. And he will give you pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Will God give that men will give unto your bosom? If it's through insurance, if it's through another person that you don't know, well, however it will be, and watch your mouth and speak blessings and not cursing. Yeah, your cousin is on the scene. Your nephew is on the scene. Your neighbor is on the scene. And I'm not who you think I am. I am the prophet. R.D. Stenson speaking. Mm -hmm. You better believe it. You, I say you better believe it.
and then to the uh, and to the rest of my family in the U.S. of A. God bless you. I'm blessing you. How, what did he say? I said, I'm blessing you with the word of God. How can he do that? Get in the book, you'll find out. And I'm taking you higher. What did he say? And I'm taking you higher, you'll find out. Get in the book. And I'm taking you higher in the name of Jesus. Get in the book, you'll find out. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm going to talk today, today, today with the aid of the Holy Spirit. Not necessarily in this order. I want to talk about something that's daily on my heart. That I want to go through them golden nuggets. Because it's those golden nuggets that keeps us build up. Some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold, a thousand times more. Then I want to go to a lesson or a title. If it be a lesson or if it be a title, back in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 through 21, uh, back in the back where Revelation and in the New Testament, 1 John, not St. John, but 1 John, and if it be a title, if it be a lesson, it will be the new birth, if you will. It will be the new birth. Did you hear me? Hallelujah. And then, hallelujah. I believe in miracle signs and wonders. I believe in miracle signs and wonders. And the name of this ministry is Speak the Word Only. I said, last time I didn't say the whole name of the ministry. It's Speak the Word Only. Speak the Word Only Ministry. Speak the Word Only ministry. That's the whole name. Speak the word only ministry. And I am prophet R.D. Stinson. Jesus gave me the name. When I was younger back in the day, he told me to walk in as an evangelist. And then he raised me up. They say, you can't do that. I heard people say you couldn't do a whole lot of things. Well, they don't know what they're talking about. Because get in the New Testament and you'll find out. One man started as a deacon. Then he became an evangelist. You can't believe everything you hear. You got to rightly divide the word of truth. And then you got to start reading the word of God. And you can't read it like a, a newspaper. Because this is not a regular book. The Bible is not an English book. It's not a USA book. It's not a Nairobi, Kenya book. It's the Word of God. And you got to rightly divide the Word of God. And I'm the man of God. And if I speak it, it shall come to pass. Many of time before I get it out of my mouth, it's a done deal. You don't have to believe it, but if you mess with me, it shall come to pass. I'm speaking it, and I will cast out demons, and they real. Demons, evil spirits, Taught on that once before. This ain't the day. I stop for a minute. Let's go on without further ado. I'm ready to do this lesson. I got to go. I got to go further. Here we go. Here we go. Gifts and fruit of the Spirit. Listen to the old man. We touched very briefly on how the gifts and the Spirit know is diverse kinds of tongues. That's many types of tongues. More than one. 
is not to be confused with speaking in tongues, which is the physical manifestations of being filled with or baptized with the Holy Spirit. We will now look at the gifts of the Spirit in greater detail and discuss how they relate to what are commonly called the fruits of the Spirit. The, the gifts and the fruits balance and go hand to hand with one another. For this reason, they should function together. Paul say in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, 23, gentleness, self-control, against such there is no law. These fruits have to do with holiness, which is something every Christian should cultivate in his or her life. This should not dull or frighten or upset any believer because we should be holy. The reason so many Christians have a challenge with the word holy is that they have not known how it should be used or how it relates to other words within the framework of the Christian economy. To clear up this misunderstanding, I want to stop and define two words. These words are sanctification and holiness. Sanctification is simply the state or place God separates us into at the new birth. Paul state us in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. But of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom for God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. He adds in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 that God has chosen us for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. Also, uh, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11 say, For both he who sanctified and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. For Hebrews chapter 10 verse 14 say that though Jesus that for that though what Jesus did for us God has perfect forever though who are being sanctified. Sanctification has nothing to do with whether or not you wear makeup, what clothing you wear, or anything else you do. It is strictly and completely a work of the Father God. If you are born again, you are sanctified. Listen to the old man. Holiness, on the other hand, is the believer responsibility. Holiness is the character and conduct of those who have experienced salvation. It is the life of, the, of, the, of Christ which should be manifest in the action and lifestyle of the believer. The Bible does not tell us to be sanctified but it very clearly tells us to be holy. Being holy means yielding our body as slaves of righteousness for holiness. Romans chapter 6 verse 19. By not lying, fornicating, gospeling, or doing anything else that would be considered unholy. 
Paul also reminds us in 1 Thessalonians 4, 7 that we have been called unto holiness. And in Romans chapter 6, verse 22, that having been set free from sin and having been become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. That is the goal. We should strive towards in our daily walk with God. The fruit of the Spirit are the character traits of the Christian life, uh, which promotes holiness. They were planted in us when we were born again, and it is up to us to water them, cultivate them, and make them grow in our life. Once we do this, these seeds will manifest fruit through a holy lifestyle. One thing people forget is that fruit comes from a process of time and steady work. They think fruit is something you should have fully formed that you never have to do anything about. That is not the case. All the things listed in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 through 23, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and so on are things that take effort to develop and maintain, maintain, especially in the face of events that will quench them. Let's take love as an example of this. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 5 verse 5 that the love of God has been poured out in our heart by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. The love of God was placed in our recreated human spirit. When we were born again and we are supposed to exercise it at all times. However, there are some people you come across in life who are a challenge to love because they act in such a unlovely manner themselves. Nevertheless, we are supposed to walk in love when dealing with those people, even though it may take a considerable effort at times. This is where faith come in. Perfect or mature love works by faith. The Bible actually says faith worketh through love. Galatians 5, chapter 5, verse 6, meaning that faith ought to be exercised out of a motive of love. Faith should not be exercised simply for the sake of showing off how spiritual we are. It should be exercised through love, our love for the Father and because Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 say that faith please him. However, you can also say that love works through faith. You can easily see that because not everyone you will come across in life will be lovable. Some people will be easier to love than others, yet the Bible instructs us to love one another, period. St. John chapter 15 verse 12, 1 John chapter 3 verse 11. That is a commandment of God and it means you have to love by or through faith. In, in order to love, we have to grow and develop in our faith life. As you demonstrate love through faith, more and more, your love develop and grow. This is why 1 John Chapter 4, verse 12 states, If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfect in us. Perfect implies a process of maturing, develop, and increase. If something has to be perfect, it has the potential for attaining perfection. 
but is, is not yet perfect. Many people do not make the effort to walk in perfect love. Instead, they operate in immature love or puppy love, which is based on how someone else reacts to you. If someone treats them mean, they will act mean. If someone treats them nice, they will, uh, they will treat other people nice. That is not how mature love operates. Mature love treat a person with honor and respect because that person is precious and valuable in the sight of God, even though he may be acting like a fool. And even if you want to hit him in the mouth, perfect love is not predicated on how someone else responds to you. It is based on having the love of God shared abroad in your heart and on having your love perfect by your faith. That does not mean you should not get out of the way if someone charges you like a bull in a channel shop. You should certainly not stand there and let that person run you down in the road of life. And you should not let that person affect your attitude or, mat or mature love either. Perfect love is based on the Word of God, and the Word of God never changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That was good. Now, See what's next and what is next is first John first John in the back where revelation at and uh, it's going to be called the new birth verse 1 through 21 the new birth first John the new birth amen Whosoever believe that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. 1 John chapter 5. The new birth. Whosoever believe that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who love him, who begotten love, him also who is begotten of him. This simply states that those who love God as their father also love God's children. Okay? And then they believe that Jesus came to this earth plane. God sent him. And he was incarnated. And he became flesh. And he dwelled among us. Okay? Then verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. And Jesus said the same thing in St. John chapter 14 verses 15. Are you with me? The Gopi love. And then verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his Commandments are not grievous. They're not hard. People are, oh, this is hard and that's hard. No, it's not. It's not grievous. The word is true. Let, let every man be a lie and God's word be true. That's scripture. So are you with me? And another golden nugget is uh, Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 through 30. Now look at verse 4. For whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. That's why you got to walk by faith. You don't walk by sight. What you see, like I keep saying, all that stuff that's going around you, life's going to happen. 
You got to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. You're going to have to. You're going to have to learn how to continue to speak the word and speak the word only. That's daily. Yes, yeah, stuff going to come. You see it. You pick it up. You pick the house bill up. You look at the house bill. Okay, the house bill coming in. The doctor, this coming in. Yeah, but you got to stop saying all of that. You see it? Instead of speaking it, right? Instead of speaking it, you speak the word. Do you see it? Yes, you see it. You're not... Your eyes ain't closed. You see it. But what do you do is the point. Okay, what do I do? I picked the house payment out the mailbox. I see it, right? What do I do? I see it. Okay, I see it. It says house payments are something. Okay, I see it. Thank you, Lord. All my needs. God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I know it's taken care of. Do I get there and say, oh, it's always some. If it ain't one thing, it's... I don't say that. Why I don't say it? Because whatever I say out of my mouth manifests. What's manifest? It, make, it makes it worse. It manifests. It comes to pass. It continues to make it worse. It elevates. It grows. I don't say that. I'm not no baby Christian. Satan ready for you to run out with the mouth. Do I see it? Of course I see it. What you think I'm teaching? What do I say? I speak the word. You speak the word? What do you mean you speak the word? I speak what I desire. What do you desire? I desire that money uh, uh, flow into my life. And then God sends someone or whatever. I don't tell him how. And then that bill be paid and much more money flow. I told you God been keeping my mouth closed. I can tell you some things, but he told me to keep my mouth closed. So and I'm much miracles done happened since we stayed here on person. But I'm keeping my mouth closed. Because God told me to. I ain't wanting about nothing. Not nothing. You might think I'm jiving, but I ain't. And I know that's not good anyway. I ain't worried about nothing. Ain't nothing. I ain't got no problem. And I ain't, I ain't worried about nothing. I ain't worried about nothing. Let me, let me, let me, wait a minute. Hold up. I got to tell you. I ain't worried about nothing since I went to Africa. Never. It's been pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Men that gave unto my bosom. I ain't never had a money problem since I went to Africa. Since I did what God said. Now, now I ain't trying to be funny. I haven't had a worry. Worry is a sin. I'm trying to teach you something. And I don't talk like that. I know what you mean when you be talking. But I don't have those situations. But I do know what you mean. I know how the flesh is. But I don't have those situations. I got to be honest now. I can't be lying. I know what you mean. But I don't have those. I'm teaching today. The Holy Spirit got on me the, the, the other day too. Because he said, you, you got to teach. And you got to teach the difference. And so this is the difference. Okay, I love you, but this is the difference. Yes, I know. 
Yes, I understand. Just like Jesus. Jesus understand. He understand because he became a man. So he know about feeling. He know about temptation. He know about temptation and about women. What did he say? Yeah, he was, t he know. He came in the flesh. It ain't nothing he don't, he don't know about. But without sin. But he became sin, the Bible say. But he didn't sin, but he became sin. Why? That's why he didn't come down off that cross. Because if he came off that cross, you and I wouldn't have a right to the tree of life. But he took, uh, he took all that sin upon him. I hope you're hearing the old man. So what I'm telling you, the name of this lesson is the new birth. We thank God for the new birth. And you have the new birth in you. So you need to learn how to start speaking the word. And speak the word only. Don't you be speaking all that other stuff you've been speaking for 50 years. Or 60 years or 70 years or how long you've been speaking it. That's why you keep getting what you've been getting. Because you're speaking it. It's going to happen to you because you speak it. It's a principle. That's why it's going to happen. It's going to. You're not exempt. So you happen it to happen. If it's sickness, you keep saying it, it's going to keep on happening. If it's bills, it'll keep on rolling. Yes, you see it. But that's how I handle it, stuff like that. I don't have no problem. Even if it try to go up, I know what to do. I ain't being funny. Did I know how to do it in the beginning? No. I had to learn. But as I kept on speaking it, as I kept on speaking it. That's how I learned it. Plus the Holy Spirit taught me. In Mama room. Before I went to Africa. Years and years before that. The Holy Spirit taught me. Before he taught me what books to go get. He literally taught me. That's when the pastors and the bishops and the prophets and apostles and the deacons. And the missionaries thought I was wacko. Because I knew what they didn't know. And what they did know, they, what school you get it from. And they were so hard hit because they didn't believe God Almighty was teaching me. How can this little young joker know this? Well, I keep trying to tell you and you don't listen. Well, when I went to Africa, all them pastors and ministers and stuff were like trying to trick me. They give a trick test on Sunday. When we go in, they done got together on Saturday and did a last day uh, uh, do uh, six pastors with preacher. Get up and preach. Give me a, a paper. You want to sit down? And then give me something. I'll be the last one. Minister, do preach this. And my bishop would be laughing. Y'all can't treat Ricky like that. The Holy Spirit helping him. So, uh, and the angels was operating uh, two helping me with miracle signs and wonders and they still do in the jails and prisons that's why I believe in miracle signs and wonders yeah me I ain't just started yesterday I know what I'm talking about and miracle signs and wonders be happening around here it happened yesterday, uh, yesterday, Friday, at that car wash with that man. He would draw to me. God told me something. It's been happening. Had another uh, 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 apostle talking to me from Africa uh, through 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 YouTube live. I can tell you some things, but but sometimes God tell you keep your mouth closed. You you ain't listening. 
Moving on. You know, verse 4, down at the uh, second part, it says, And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. Without faith, it won't please God. You got to walk by faith. And saying you got faith ain't going to get it. You'll know if you got faith, because if you got faith, you won't be talking back and forth like wishy-washy. Like James say, uh, 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 like the waves in the ocean. If you really walking by faith, you won't be talking back and forth. That's how we that's how I be knowing if you really walking by faith. If you walking by faith, you'll stand on it. You won't stand on the day and be off tomorrow. I, I, I can tell you that. Verse five Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believed that Jesus is the Son of God. And if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you'll be about your father's business. And then you'll be walking in victory. And this stuff will start leaving you alone, too. It has to. It don't do it for one and won't do it for the other. Verse 6. I'm just being honest. This is he who came by water and blood. Even Jesus, even Jesus Christ. It referred to the living word became flesh that was in John chapter 1, uh, 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 St. John chapter 1, verse, verse 1 through, through, through 4. This is symb symbolic by water. And then as the Lamb of uh, uh, Lamb, uh, 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 Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world which was affected by the shedding of his blood on the cross of Calvary not by water only but by water and blood did you hear that and it is the spirit who bear witness because the spirit is true did you hear that look at verse 7 for there are three who bear record in heaven. Three. The Father, the Word, and Jesus is the Word. And this is the written Word. Huh? The Logos. Huh? And the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Did you hear that? And look at verse 8. And there are three who bear witness in the earth. The spirit. And the water. And the blood. And these three agree in one. Shout about it somebody. You eating steak. In verse 9. If we receive the witness of men. The witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of of God which he has testified of his son look at verse 10 he who believes on the son of God has the witness in himself and he who believes not God has made him a liar because he believed not the record that God has given of his son Did you hear that? Look at verse 11. And this is the record that God has given to us. Eternal life. And this life is in his son. That's why Jesus is the way to the Father. And there is no other name whereby men may be saved but the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus. You Buddha ain't the way. No other name. No other way. So you come in any other way, you're a thief and a liar. I don't care who said it. Verse 12. He who has the Son has life. And he who has not the Son of God has not life. Look at verse 13. 
These things have I written unto you who believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know. Now watch this. This verse 13. This is a heavy verse of scripture, verse 13. And the reason why I love verse 13 very much, you can put a bunch of checks on it, write it down, circle it, do whatever you want to do. So people be saying, you don't know if you save it until you die. That's a lie. This verse right here, I'm going to prove it. See, I know that I'm saved. I'm not guessing. I'm not wishing. Watch verse 13. These things have I written unto and this and this lesson is going to be a little longer. These things, these things have I written unto you who believes on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of of the Son of God, that you may know and that you may believe on the Son of God. That's why you should know. 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And how we know that is according to his will, because we study the scripture. That's the manual, and that's how we be known. Simple as that. And verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition, the pet, uh, petition that we desire of him. It's the scriptures. We know. In verse 16, if any man see his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death, sin against the Holy Spirit won't be forgiven in this life or the life to come. That's blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. But he shall act and he shall give him life for them who sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. And look at verse 17. All unrighteousness is sin and there is sin not unto death. Look at verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sin not. He doesn't practice sin. Remember I told you that? Be, begotten of God keep himself and the wicked one touch him not. Satan can't mess with you when you walking in God. You don't practice sin. Going around doing the things you used to do over and over and over and over and over. 19. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lie in wickedness. Look at verse 20. And we know that the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true even in his Son Jesus Christ. That is the true God and eternal life. Verse 21. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. Did you get that? Now let me go to some golden nuggets. This lesson a little long, but I'm teaching it and it is good. All right. Let's go to Job. Job chapter 4. Golden nuggets. Job chapter 4 Job chapter 4 verse 12 to 20 21 Job chapter 4 12 to 21 Are you with me? Listen. 12 to 21 Job J O B Old Testament chapter 4 verse 12 21 now a thing was secretly brought to me and my ears received a little thereof listen to the book because I'm in the book verse 13 in though for the visions of the night when sleep fall when when deep sleep fall on men verse 14 fear came upon me and trembling 
which made all my bones to shake. 15. Then a spirit passed before my face. The hairs of my flesh stood up. 16. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. A image was before my eyes. There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, verse 17, Shall mortal men be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? 18. Behold, he put no trust in his servant and his angel. He charged with folly. Verse 19. How much less in them who dwell in houses of clay, who foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before the mouth. Verse 20. They are destroyed from morning to evening. They perish from even without any regard it. Verse 21. Does not their excellent which is in them go away? They die even without wisdom. Did you hear that? Dropping some state. All right. Let's go to Hosea. Let's go to Hosea. see what it say. Hosea chapter 12. Hosea chapter 12. Let's see what verse. Verse 10. Okay, Hosea chapter 12, verse 10. Hosea chapter 12, verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have mother tools of visions, and use mother tools by the ministries of the prophets. Okay, it's divine communications referred to here are predicated prophets and visions are similitudes and similitudes refer to illustration shout about it somebody let's go to Isaiah 45 golden nuggets if you will Isaiah 45 I'm giving you state Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. Verses 5. Verses 5. Let's see. What's the first one? Isaiah 45. Verse 5. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girt you through you, have not known me. That's the first one. And then the second one is uh, verse 6. That they may know from the rising of the sun 
and from the west that there is none besides me I am the Lord and there is none else then verse 7 and then verse 7 say then verse and then verse and then verse let me see then verse 7 say I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. All of this debute the stupidity of evolution. The phase I create evil is rendered according to the following. The Hebrew word used here for evil is ra. That's our a and in never rendered sin, but rather calamity, diversity, distress, and trouble. This evil is meant to be direct by God at the enemies of his people. Did you get that? Now, Verse 11. Verse 11. This said the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his Maker, ask me of a thing to come concerning my sons, uh, with an S on it, and concerning the works of my hand, command you me. Now listen. This past passage has been misunderstood. By many thinking it has, it gave the right to the potter, I mean it gave the right to the pottery to command the potter. The merit of the entirety of this chapter and more particularly verse 7 through 12 speaks of the omnipotent and omnipotent of God and the folly of the individual striving with the maker. They should have been a question mark at the end of the sentence. Amen. Now 12. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I even my hands have scratched out the heavens and all their hosts have I commanded. The idea of all of this is God is saying, I do the commanding and not you. That's verse 12. Shout about it. You got that? Now let's go to Psalm 68. I'm almost finished and we can pray. Psalm 68. Psalm 68 and 17. Psalm 68 and 17. The chariots, chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai, in the holy place. Shout about it, somebody. This speaks of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter 19. If we are to take this passage literally, it means that there will be over 20 million chariots of God occupied by angels involving in the second coming. It further says the Lord will be among them. Now, let's get another one. 68 and 4. Sing. Six, Psalm 68 and 4. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Exalt him who ride upon the heavens by his name, Jah. And another passage, it'll say Yah. And rejoice before him. Shout about it, somebody. Then one more. One more verse. Exodus. 
Exodus. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 14. That's the last one. We can go and we can pray. Exodus 14. Exodus 14 and verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Did you hear that? Exodus in the Old Testament chapter 14 Verse 14. Somebody need to shout about it. Hallelujah. Now. Father God, I thank you that we have received your word, your grafted word with faith and power and authority. Today, today, today. We thank you, Lord God, that you have saved people. I can't do anything without the aid of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you have saved people, that you have given people homes, cars, houses, provision, food, and everything they have stand in need of and desires of their heart, healing, wholeness, and we are thankful to you, oh God, today, today, today. And Lord God, we believe in miracles, signs, and wonders by the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we also thank you, Lord God, that you have, like I say, saved and delivered and made free. Now, according to Romans chapter 10, verse uh, 9, 10, and 13, and we believe that who, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We believe that you sent Jesus Christ to this earth, that he died upon the cross, that he was buried, and on the third day you raised him from the dead, and whosoever believes in that shall become born again, born again, born again, and that uh, whosoever be baptized, in his name shall be saved. We believe in Acts 2.38. We also believe in Acts chapter 19 verses 1 through 7. We ask God for the prayer language and he will give it to us. Whatever we desire according to God's word, we ask God and he will give it to us according to his word. We thank you God. We love you God. And we thank you for giving us a right now word. To the next time, O oh Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Shalom, 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 amen.